Hi, I'm Grady. I'm with Simply Embedded, and today I'm going to talk about flip flops. Well, not these flip flops, but these. So, without further ado, let's get into the concept. Flip flop is a clocked circuit and can be used to store data. It is a single bit device, meaning it has a state of 1 or 0 in binary. There are a few common types of flip flops set reset flip flops, data flip flops, toggle flip flops, and just kidding flip flops. Well, the last one isn't really just kidding. It is JK flip flop, which is named after its inputs J and K. Even though there are a few kinds of flip flops out there, the most frequently used one in FPGAs is the D flip flop. It is used to create devices such as shift registers, memory cells, and many other ones. There are three types of D flip flops, rising edge, falling edge, and dual edge. I'll cover all of these in this video. The symbol for D flip flop consists of data input D, clock, and output Q. The D flip flop uses a clock signal to trigger output Q. So to understand how the D flip flop works, we first need to figure out how the clock works. I'm not talking about a clock that might be on your wall or on your table. Well, a clock in an FPGA is a continuous stream of rectangular one bit pulses, ones and zeros, where one represents high voltage and zero low voltage. These pulses have a period or a frequency of how often they repeat themselves per one second. This one period here is also known as a cycle. For example, a typical clock frequency for an FPGA is 100 megahertz. The units of hertz are one cycle per second. So meaning that it's, it's how many cycles per second you can do. So the 100 megahertz translates to 100 times 10 to the 6 hertz, which is equal to 100 million cycles per second. This is fast. I mean, really fast. Can you imagine this one cycle repeats itself 100 million times in one second? A clock is used to synchronize and trigger digital systems. And in this case, we'll be using the clock signal to trigger the flip flops. Let's move on and let's talk about the rising edge triggered D flip flop. The symbol for this, as earlier mentioned, has an input D, an input clock, and an output Q. The output Q depends on two conditions. What is the input of D? And what is the signal from the clock doing? Meaning that the rising edge triggered D flip flop will change output Q if and only if the clock is changing from zero to one at the rising edge, only at this instant. Not, not any other instant, only at this one small amount of time, the output Q will change. Any other time, the Q will follow the previous uh, signal what it had. So when analyzing this timing diagram, we can see that the input D goes high here for this time, which means that at the rising edge here, the output Q will go high. It will stay high here. It should stay high here as well because input D is high. Input D is high here at this rising edge as well, so Q should be high which is absolutely correct. So just as expected, at this rising edge, D is high, output is high. D is high, output is high. Even though D changed to zero here and went back to high, this rising edge D flip-flop absolutely could not care about what happens any other time than the rising edge. From my personal standpoint, I feel it's a little bit selfish, but this is how the rising edge triggered D flip-flop works. It doesn't care about any other situation but the rising edge. That's the only thing it cares about. And at this rising edge, the output will go low. Meaning that at these instances, since input D is low, the output will be low. And notice that this input signal D was completely ignored again, just because it didn't occur at the time of the rising edge. When creating FPGA designs, it's highly important to keep in mind the clock frequency. In case the clock frequency is too slow, we might miss the input D, or if it's too fast, the same thing might happen, or the output is triggered too many times, or whatever might be the case. So for future designs, you don't want to go too fast, you don't want to go too slow, you just want to find the right frequency and make, it, make your design more efficient. Next, we're going to talk about the falling edge trigger D flip flop. The symbol for this one is very similar to the previous one, although it has a small circle down here. Similar to the rising edge flip-flop, 
the output will change if and only if the clock signal is changing from 1 to 0. So in an instant when the clock is going from 1 to 0, the output can change. In the other case, the falling edge trigger default flop does not care. Well, a very selfish thing again, but that's how it works. This is the real world. All right, so the input D is high here, which means that at this instant, Q should go high. Absolutely correct. So at this falling edge, D is high, so Q should be high. Now D is low at this falling edge, so D should go low. And at this point, D should stay low. Notice that this is completely ignored. It doesn't matter what's happening in between the falling edges. The D can be whatever it wants in between, but if it doesn't change the state at the falling edge, the output Q won't change. All right, let's go to the dual edge trigger default flop. The symbol for dual edge trigger default flop has an additional triangle here. So this is how you can distinguish it from the other ones. This one combines the first two default flops, meaning that the output would change if and only if the clock signal is changing from zero to one or, or from one to zero. So either one of these cases, it's, it's gonna change based on that. Meaning that this one is a little bit less selfish. All right, let's analyze the timing diagram for this one. So if D is high here, Q should be high because of the rising edge. At this rising edge, Q should say high, and at this one, Q should go low because D is low. So now at this rising edge, since D is high, Q should go high, and then at this one, D stays high. Now at this one, since input D is low at the rising edge of the clock, Q will go low as well, and Q will go high here because of the falling edge of the clock and the input D. And finally, the output will stay low until the end because there's no change in D anymore. For example, if there would be an input D signal between the rising edge and falling edge, the dual edge triggered flip-flop would not be able to catch this. So it's important to design your clock frequency so you would be able to catch at least one of those. All right, let's move on to an example of a basic shift register using D flip-flops. So we're gonna use three rising edge triggered D flip-flops. So we're gonna have data in as an input, a clock, a synchronous clock, which means that there's a clock signal, it's the same clock signal for each D flip flop, and then output data out. These are in between signals or wires D1 and D2. All right, let's analyze the system. So what we should expect is when data in goes high, the high signal is passed to D1, then, then to D2, and then to data out. So when analyzing this timing diagram, we can see this data in signal, which is high for a small amount of time. So at this rising edge, we should expect that D1 is high, which is correct. And then D1 goes low because then a zero is passed through, which absolutely correct, right? So for D2, we have a similar situation. Since D1 was high here at this rising edge still, it, it passes through a one and then at this rising edge, we'll be going back to zero because D1 was zero. Now, a similar thing happens to data out. Notice that essentially this one input high signal was shifted along the D flip flops. So it was shifted here, 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 and here. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and share. Keep up the good work and see you next time.